So I've got two typodons here. And we are looking at bonding brackets. Okay guys, so the first step on bracket bonding is getting your long axes and horizontal axes right. So, so if we look at this model now, this is a growing child and you can see that the molars and premolars still haven't erupted. So most likely if I were to be bonding a bracket here, I'd try to go more gingival to help it erupt. So let's put a horizontal axis here. Now what I'm doing as I'm going along is uh, I will be looking at from the occlusal side, okay? I can see from occlusal now this is a bit rotated. So you need to look at it from a few different angles. You want to make sure marginal ridge, the mesial and the distal are parallel to the horizontal axis and also make sure the height of the bracket is fine. So in this case, say it's a growing child, the teeth may be erupting, so I will try to put it a bit more gingival. I'll make sure that my marginal ridges are parallel to the horizontal because this premolar is slightly twisted, even my bracket's slightly off, okay? And it is parallel to the marginal ridges. So I'm bonding the 3-3 three, three now, just here, the lower left 3. So from a clusal aspect, I'm seeing a long axis of the canine and I need to match that long axis to the long axis of the... Um, Bracket. Okay, let's put another bracket on and this time I might mark the long axis. So I want to keep all my incisors height the same. If I want to extrude something, of, of course the bracket will have to be a bit lower. Okay, so I'm just marked my two long axes. I'm going to position this incisor bracket here. So what I'm also going to do is make sure the horizontal part is lined up with where I want it to be. And on the sixes and sevens, you use something called a tube. Okay, so I will show you how to bond a tube. And the first molar tube, you can actually line it up with a buckle group. There's often a notch on it. So let's get the composite on our bracket base. There is a buckle groove on this bracket. It's really thin. You just have to feel it with a scaler. But basically, make sure that buckle groove is lined up with the buckle groove on the six. Now, if the six anatomy is flat, Often that makes it a little bit challenging to get this bracket right. And you can now see equal amount of distal buckle cusp, equal amount of mesial buckle. So I'm just checking it from the front, just pushing it down a bit more. To me, that looks a lot better. It's lined up with the buckle groove, the little notch. I'm going to push it in. When you push it in, often it just adapts to the anatomy of the tooth. And we are going to cure. So if we really zoom in and have a look at this, you can see the horizontal position of this bracket, that one. Now, obviously, if a wire went through here and there, it's maintaining the horizontal position unless you kind of extruded the two teeth by some sort of active force. The active force could be elastic, could be a step bend, anything like that. Okay, or even expansion can cause extrusion. Get a wire like this. Now to thread it intraorally in the patient's mouth, obviously you would use something like a jarrah bag. Now if you want to put modules, if you were to ligate a full arch, a crowded arch like this, that didn't have self-ligating brackets, you're gonna put modules. So I just got it around, all around here. If you wanna remove an elastic module, you get your scaler a sharp scaler, lift it up, take it out, done.